In cities, you often see people like this guy. Desperate looking people often holding signs like this one. It's natural to want to help people like this man or this woman begging by a road in Salt Lake City. Her sign says she's stranded in need of help, trying to get home. When drivers stop, she tells them, I'm from Seattle. I came down here to live with my boyfriend and he ended up kicking me out a week before Christmas. You got nothing then? No, just my backpack. She tells this reporter from KUTV she's a thousand miles from home. It's hard to eat. It's hard to have a place to stay. But then the cameraman quietly followed her and found she actually lives just two blocks away in this house. In the morning, she'd go shopping with a nice coat and purse, and then in the afternoon, she changed clothes and walked two blocks to the highway off-ramp and took out her son. People gave her money. Uh, about three bucks, five dollars. Doing the math shows she made more than 50 bucks an hour. I just felt sorry for her, a girl out there like that. I gave her a couple dollars. She lives in a house. What do you think about that? That is crazy. I live in a trailer. <laughs> Dude, people pull over. I don't say anything to anybody. I hold this sign. I don't make anybody give me money. It is true that she doesn't make anyone give her money, but Thank lots of people so want to help those who well, seem to be I'll in need. Be, I got it. But lots of America's beggars are not needy. They're just freeloaders who've found a good racket. When I first reported on freeloading, I wondered, would these people holding will work for food signs really work for food? I just can't work for anybody. Would he flip burgers at Burger King? I wouldn't do it. It's a monotonous job. Maybe construction. I can't do it. My back. He says he would do janitorial work. That I would do. But will he do it five days a week? That I can't do. Why not? Uh, well, why should I? Why does a human have to work every day if he don't want to? I have lawn work. Do you? Do you have some right now? I offered jobs to a dozen people who said they'd work for food. All 12 said they'd come, but only this man did. He did the work, and we paid him 20 bucks, but he might have made more money begging. There have been estimates uh, that uh, uh, earning $100 a day panhandling is easy. Steve Malanga and Heather McDonald write for City Journal, a magazine about urban policy. They say beggars today are hustlers. But there must be a lot of them who are genuinely homeless or mentally ill desperate people. Well, every big city has food kitchens galore. The reason that people are on the streets asking for change is overwhelmingly drugs and alcohol. I wasn't homeless, you know? It was just an easy way to get money. John Buster used to make a living panhandling. And the best day? Yeah. Maybe about $150. Did he have trouble finding a job? I didn't look for no job. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? That was my job. <laughs> Panhandling as a job is common in some places. Here in San Francisco, packs of young, healthy kids beg for spare change. Spanging, they call it. Gotta survive, you know? Gotta eat, gotta drink. An art student from Stanford interviewed some of the kids. Wake up in the morning, and start drinking, go to bed, do it again. That's pretty much it. <laughs> They have the most deep-seated sense of entitlement that I've ever come across. We want to be able to sit where we want to. This is our home, man. Nobody's going to make us leave. Punishing homeless people for being homeless when insufficient shelter space is unavailable. America's so-called homeless advocates often say government should solve this problem by spending more on social services, shelters, subsidies for affordable housing jobs program. This is a solution that is utterly irrelevant to these kids because they're not planning on settling down. They don't want housing. We really rely on the generosity of others and there's some very generous people. There sure are. Thank you so much, sir. This oh, beggar collected you. $8 in less than an hour. Past minimum wage. Can you help me, ma'am? That's me with a beer. Uh, thank you. Since people wouldn't give John Stossel money, I hired this makeup artist to transform me into a beggar. She glued a beard to my face. Then I put on some old clothing. Okay. You ready to freeload? It's the new John Stossel. Okay. I hit the streets and started begging. I didn't want to get in anyone's face, so I didn't beg aggressively. Most of the time, I just sat on the sidewalk. At first, I tried the basic homeless and cold, anything will help sign. Little help? It worked. A little bit. This woman gave me food. Oh, thank you very much. 
Oh, food. I even got offered a Maybe. cigarette. A cigarette? No, thank you. This, this man gave me some change and a job offer. Listen, if you're looking for a little work, I need somebody to hand out flyers. You know, if you're around, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, here. Give you some work. Yeah. Thank you. After half an hour, I switched to this sign. Can I get a beer? I'd seen beggars trying this more honest, or you might say, funny approach. I didn't think anyone would give this guy money, but I was wrong. Thank you. You know, I'm a beer drinker myself. Yeah, thank you. I made just as much money with my beer thank sign you, as I did with my cold and homeless sign. Some people wanted to take my picture. That's funny as hell. Can I have a picture with you? Sure. My girlfriends will think that's too cute. Okay. I'll buy you a beer. There you go. Did you get it? Jenny got a crack up. We caught up with the people who gave me money, <laughs> gave them their money back, and asked them, really, why did you give? It's kind of cold outside. I'm pretty cold myself, so. I'm thinking about his situation. I don't know, that guy looked pretty needy, I suppose. <laughs> I just begged for an hour, but I did well. If I did this for an eight hour day, I would have made 90 bucks, 23 thou for a year, tax free. That easy money is why cities are filled with panhandlers. Individuals respond to incentives. If that incentive includes giving them money for no work, there'll be more of them doing that. And the people who give they're doing a very bad thing. They are merely perpetuating uh, somebody's misery. As long as they can stay on the streets getting money for drugs and alcohol, they're going to. Uh, and they're enabling a very self-destructive lifestyle. You're just right-wingers who are not compassionate. Some of these kids, adults, are, must be in need. Some are, but the proper solution for that is not to keep enabling a lifestyle that so eventually just is going right to leave. Just Just ignore them? Uh, yes. That's the advice city agencies give. Give real change to the homeless. Call us. We'll send an outreach team to help. Give to charities. Don't give to people. It doesn't get through. A few cities, this is Athens, Georgia, try to get through to people by installing fake parking meters. They call them homeless meters. On the parking meters, it says, you know, don't give to the panhandler. If you feel a need for compassion, put it in here. We'll make sure it go to, goes to people who really need the money and, and it, the money is used in the, in the right way. Resources do exist to help the truly needy. Food kitchens are plentiful. One charity I like is the Doe Fund. They help John Buster put panhandling behind him. Instead of giving handouts, they retrain people to take responsibility for their lives. They, they, they don't allow you to get food stamps or anything or nothing like that. That's not allowed in the door front. They want you to be independent. They gave John room and board and paid him to clean streets. Now he supervises others. You don't have to wait around for somebody to give you something. You go out there and you make your own money. You know, you get your self-esteem back. Because happiness comes from productive work, not freeloading.